What's up, folks? <laughs> How's it going? That's right. I took up pipe smoking. Got one for Christmas. Hasn't been the same since. I'm telling you what, during the winter months, this is the way to go. It's a little bit too cold to be smoking a cigar out in the garage or anything like that. Um, pipe smoke, the smell of it, it's, it's, I love it. I really do. Um, plus, you're like 10 times smarter whenever you hold one. You know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? But uh, <laughs> We're back, folks. We're back. Uh, I know it's been a minute, and I wanted to tell everybody Happy New Year. I know it's a little bit late, but hey, better late than not. Um, I originally wanted to do a review of 2020, but we already lived through it, so there's no reason to uh, really get into it other than a toilet paper shortage, and stuff got unreal, okay? It really did. Um, today is the 20th. It is the day when we put a new president in and the old one left. Um, first impressions, first impressions. I'll tell you what, um, I think the old blueprint has returned. The blueprint that we've seen for the last, or I've seen for the last 40 years um, has returned. The old guard, uh, doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, that blueprint is the same for both. And it's a fraternity of just messed up, I don't know what. People's own personal agendas and things like that. It's not for the people, you know? Don't believe a word I say, look it up. But it's not for the people, you know? It's the government, they even said it during the speech. They work for us. We don't work for them. They're our cheerleaders, not vice versa. You know what I mean? So why are they doing stuff and not listening to the people? The people that got them in forever. You know, this is on both sides. I, when I'm speaking right now, I'm not right, left, anything like that, okay? This is just one shot down the middle because they're both the same. They really are. In spite of what you've seen on the news, media, everything, which is designed specifically to tailor to your point of view. So you don't ever get an opposing side or anything like that. Uh, one of the uh, one of the things I noticed in 2020, I talked to people both on the left and the right, and it's amazing because at some point in the conversations, you will get that look of like, I can't believe you think that way. If you knew what I knew, you wouldn't think that way. And you get that on both sides. And I found that very, very interesting. Uh, that only backed up my thought about media and how tailored it is to just one-sidedness. It's, it's just made to separate and to keep separating, okay? Uh, it's segregation at its most surgical. It really is. When you think about it, um, segregation of ideas, race, principles, everything. Uh, I've had many conversations with people over the last year on both sides. And one thing too that I noticed, everybody watches these videos, these either 15 second videos or three minute videos. But very seldom do you get someone who sees the whole video. So their whole ideology is based on a little clip with no context. And uh, I saw a lot of that, a lot of that. Um, and unfortunately, people roll with that. They do, they roll hard, they're ready. People were actually saying that on both sides. I'm ready, I'm ready for whatever goes down. Well, what exactly is gonna go down? Because you don't even have half the news, let alone, you don't know if that news is even proper, you know? I gotta watch what keywords I say here because if this is on Facebook or something like that, man, they got them watchdogs and those uh, fact finders. And there's people actively watching. And if they don't like the opinion that you have, they report you. But hey, you know, this is America, land of free speech. Um, 
kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Uh, but one thing Biden said in his speech today was he wanted to uh, unify America and he was talking about how he was going to represent the people uh, that didn't vote for him just as hard as the people that did vote for him, you know? Uh, hopefully he rectifies this uh, censorship thing because it's very hammer and sickle and it's not stars and stripes, folks. It's really not. And it's very, uh, it can lead to very bad things. It really can. Um, it, it's just crazy. It's crazy. And I've been watching the inauguration on CNN today. And I'll watch it on Fox later on today. And I'll get, uh, I don't know if I'll get any kind of uh, a semblance of a true story, but you just hear so, everything is so opposite. You know what's crazy? This is a corn cob pipe on one network. On the other network, this is the evilest thing in the world and it will kill you. And you need to do this and that. Literally, that's what's happening here on the news. And people are just falling for it left and right. It's crazy. Joseph Goebbels would have been so proud of this propaganda machine. I'm telling you, whoever made up this psychological operation over the last year should just get not even a medal, just never pay taxes again, okay? Go anywhere in the world for free, do whatever you want, you know? It's, uh, it's been crazy. You gotta look at the whole picture, not just one, the whole picture. And, uh, like I said, I, I get people to talk to me from both sides and it's it allows me to see a bigger picture, not so much with what's going on, but with how people's stories or their beliefs are based on such little fact, if fact at all. So it's pretty crazy. I'm, I'm watching all the past presidents standing here in line and uh, you got the Clintons. What I wanted, I really wanted was to see the Clintons and then on the banner below say Epstein didn't kill himself. I thought that would have been, uh, that would have been kind of cool. It would have, but uh, didn't happen, didn't happen. But you see the old guard here, or at least I do it. Like I said, I'm watching all the old presidents just standing there and uh, it's the old blueprint. And those people benefited more so than any of us did. So in that regard, I guess I'm kind of sad to see that return. I really am. Um, you know what's good about it? Hopefully this will give some normalcy to people who who need it, you know, but at the same time, and I hope to God I'm wrong. Uh, I said it before, if Biden gets in, uh, we're gonna go back to war. Gas prices will go up. School shootings will return. You know, I hope to God I'm wrong on that. And um, God, who knows what else? Take a picture and keep in mind prices of today. In a year, we'll see where we're at and see what uh, what truly happened. If this was a good move or a bad move. But um, yeah, the way they're talking right now, they want to overturn a bunch of policies. And some of the policies were actually pretty good. Uh, they brought jobs back to America and, and uh, financially made us more capable. Um, to want to get rid of that, I don't know why they would want to do that if you're pro-American. Even if it was Trump who signed it in. I mean, if you're really pissy about that, you probably don't belong in a position of power. Uh, you have to remain neutral. You know, whether you're right, left, middle, whatever, you have to remain neutral if you want to serve the people. Um, pretty crazy. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Today's kind of a weird day. I was watching it. Um, my family was watching it. And, you know, you got to respect the office of the president. That's how I was raised, no matter who's in there, uh, whether you think it's right, wrong, or whatever. And uh, I remember when Obama got elected and people just kind of ran on him too, you know? And then Trump got elected and people just shit on him. And now Biden's in here and the potential is there. You know, we'll see what uh, what happens. I don't necessarily agree with uh, how things went down, you know, 
in seeing both sides of the story, oh man, there's a lot of hypocrisy. It really is. It's hard not to see it. It really is. But uh, who am I? I'm just the guy that you're watching. So thank you very much. Thank you for being part of the nation. I truly appreciate it. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and that little uh, notification bell, and then you'll never miss an episode. I promise. I promise. Speaking of promises, we hear them every election cycle. Are we going to hear the same issues and the same promises being said? I think one good thing that Trump had, had brought up um, during the debates was, hey, you've been in office for 40 years. Why haven't you done anything? That should be a staple question for anybody running for any office or, or anybody running for president. You've been in politics for God knows how long. And now you want to promise? Now you want to do things? You know, that was a hell of a question. And it should be applied to all. It really should. But uh, And they should answer it. It really should. Um, no reason not to, unless you're lying. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully everybody, everybody takes their meds. <laughs> you know, uh, it seems like everybody did because a lot of peace, love, and happiness going on. Um, a lot of forgetfulness. I noticed, uh, especially on CNN, they're talking about when the, the Capitol was raided on the worst day in history and so forth and so forth and the massacre on the Hill. Um, and yes, that was a horrible thing that happened. It truly was uh, and is. But at the same time that they're saying that, I still remember the pictures and the footage of Washington on fire. Seattle, Oregon, New York, rioters in the streets, actively hunting down police. Where was the response then? You know, um, I remember this. So when I hear this, that's what I'm talking about, the hypocrisy. You know, you can't just say, oh, but, well, it was on Trump's watch. So it was worse. And, and you know, those people were protesters. They weren't rioters. Clearly, they were <laughs> fucking rioters. Are you kidding me? But, uh, you know, they're all the same. So put them all together. Don't just say this one day was bad just to push your narrative. Because then you're lying to us again. The old blueprint again. But, uh, like I said, who am I? I'm just a guy with two eyes, two ears, and I hear everything. That's it. It's crazy. <laughs> But no, folks, hopefully this country can mend itself. Um, a lot of the division, uh, you know, one, I had a conversation with, with someone and they were uh, telling me how surprised they were that California is segregated. Uh, and having grown up there, I said, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And oppression, I, I've talked about this in other episodes, for, for, uh, oppression and racism are usually taught from the closest people. Not the boogeyman across the street who's saying, no, you can't come over here and get a good job. No, no. It's taught by people that look like you, that talk like you, that live in the area with you. And if you want to stop that, it starts at home. It really does. So, But I'm not really here to preach or anything like that. I'm still watching the inauguration. I'm going to finish my pipe. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, Check it out. Let me let me let me hit you to some uh, really good tobacco. It's uh, Cult Blood Red Moon. Okay, it's a really good aromatic uh, cherry. Really really nice smoke, and uh, leaves the room smelling really really great. So if you don't want to go outside and have a cigar in the cold, I highly suggest maybe. Maybe you should get a pipe, a corn cob pipe. They're fairly cheap and they're great smokes. They really are. Um, one thing I found out, pipes can go up to like four grand, things like that. Not me. Eight bucks on Amazon, I'm telling you, and it works like a champ. It really does. So, But on that note, folks, everybody, let's just hug it out. Let's just do something. All this fighting and crap is stupid. And don't be dumb. Don't believe everything you see and you hear unless it's on this show i'm telling you um yeah it's crazy huge shout out terry taylor out there and coleman thank you very much for the help thank you for being a fan uh 
yeah, that was pretty cool. Thank you for your help that one day. Uh, truly appreciate it. Got fans everywhere, and I really, really appreciate you. I appreciate the Toilet Talk Nation. Thank you for being a part of, and thank you for keep on coming around. Uh, can't do this without everybody. So, see, I wish a politician would talk like that because that's a damn fact. They can't get in the office unless they're voted in. The controversy there, I don't know. Can't really talk about it because these algorithms have just kicked me to the curve. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to continue watching this. And uh, it's a historic moment. Kamala Harris, first female vice president. That's a big deal. Really is long time coming. Uh, whether I agree with it or not, doesn't really matter. Uh, I will always say Tulsi Gabbard should have ran for president. I would have voted for her. Um, a very strong female candidate that is just hands down uh, for America. And there was no mistaking that, you know, uh, Democratic uh, candidate, she would have done it. And... Um, God, I cannot remember this guy's name. He's the guy with the eye patch, the uh, the seal that they were making fun of on Saturday Night Live. Um, I don't want to get his name right, but him and Tulsi Gabbard on a ticket would have been great. Republican, Democrat, both pro-American. Not, you know, they, they didn't seem too corrupted at this point. You know what I mean? So I, I think those would have been extremely strong candidates. Um, versus what we have now. I think the blueprint would have been a little bit different with them. So up, on that note, I'm not no uh, to political edition. expert, Before but like I said, two eyes, two ears. What's I'm up, seeing some crazy stuff here. So absolutely nuts. So I'm going to continue watching this. And then on the next episode, we're going to touch base on the Super Bowl. See who's going, What's how up, they're doing. Edition? What's happening and all that. So that'll be uh, that'll be something. Sports in 2020 has sucked. Sucked. <laughs> but until then, folks, everybody have a great day. Don't be dumb. Keep it covered. Stay strong. Stay loyal. Peace.